Hi, everyone. This is Carly from Lucid Press. Uh, if you guys could just send me a quick chat just to let me know that you can hear me, and then we can go ahead and get started. All right, perfect. So we'll go ahead and get started. <coughs> Sorry about that. So just to get started, um, first off, I would love it if you guys can go ahead and log into your Lucid Press accounts now. Uh, there will be some uh, hands-on training. I'm going to show you exactly how to do uh, certain things in the platform. And it's just always easier if you can learn by doing it yourself in your own account. Uh, just to start off with, uh, this meeting will be recorded. I, I believe that you would have seen a pop-up in the very beginning notifying you that it is being recorded. We're going to send out the recording after um, and after it's been processed. So welcome everyone to the first uh, master class with Lucid Press. This one is going to be specifically on uh, user management. Just a quick introduction. My name is Carly Nightinger. I'm the implementation manager here at Lucid Press. And then I also have Brie Yamauchi with me as well. Hi, everyone. I am battling a very uh, large bug in my system. I've been sick for a couple of weeks now, so I'm not going to do as much talking as I had hoped to do. I'm actually going to turn that over to Carly at the end to share a customer success story of mine that's really compelling and hopefully uh, awesome for you to be able to apply to your own use case. I will also be managing the chat box. Uh, so as Carly speaking, if you have any questions, please put them in that chat box and I'll be happy to respond. If you want to let everybody see that, um, keep it keep it on to the, the permissions of everyone seeing it so we can kind of answer each other's questions together. Uh, if there's specific questions, I'm likely going to just respond to you in that chat box. If they're kind of questions that I think would apply to everybody, we'll go ahead and have those questions answered at the end as in a Q&A session that, that Carly or I will be able to answer. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off talking about teams and groups. So I've put up a couple use cases here. I, you can really break down uh, teams and groups into uh, specific use cases. So one would be location. So if you have multiple locations within your company um, or regions, you can do that. You can do it by department or by role. So having a group for admins only. But keep in mind that these are just ideas for use cases. Lucid Press is really flexible. And so I really encourage you guys to use these groups um, to really facilitate anything that you need to have done in your platform. So I am going to go ahead and show you how to uh, go about using those groups. So you're going to start off by going into your platform here. You're going to go over to the team tab right here and click on users. Now, as you can see, I have built out my different groups by all those different use cases. So I have it by role, but with all admins, I have it by department for marketing, and I also have it by location. Keep in mind that you can even do subgroups. So I put the Americas and a bunch of different locations within the Americas. So real quick, the difference between uh, teams and groups is really going to be that the team, this right here, is going to be everybody included in your platform. The groups are going to be uh, specific groups of individuals. So whether that's by department, location, role, anything that you would like. Because really what these teams and groups are made to do is for it to stand as a distribution list for your documents, templates, and photos. Whenever you create any one of those, you have the opportunity to share out with your entire team, which will send it out to everybody on the platform, or a specific group, or even an individual. 
Now I'm going to go through very quickly on how to create a user because a lot of you have taken your admin courses, which is fantastic. But just as a little refresher, I'm going to go ahead and create a user. So we have lots of different options for bringing in users into the platform. You have the classic add by email. You just put in their email separated by commas. But I'm going to uh, pause here on the add manually section. This is going to be super helpful for creating a pseudo user. Uh, since you're going to be seeing it from the admin perspective, but maybe you don't want to share it out with your user base right off the bat, you can create a dummy user. Just make sure that it has the at symbol right here. As long as it has the at symbol, you can put in just about any email. I usually put in my normal email plus one or plus user uh, because the platform will ignore anything after the plus symbol. Another popular way to upload users is going to be through the CSV upload. Now, this one is probably my favorite because you get to upload a lot of information about all your users right off the bat because otherwise they'll show up like this, where it's just showing their email. That makes smart fields a little bit more difficult. Whereas if you do a CSV upload, you can put in their name, email, and even give them a password along with anything else that you would like to. So when you start using smart fields, it'll populate their name immediately rather than prompting them to go into their account and updating their name. So just keep that in mind. All right, so going back to the users. Now keep in mind that this is going to be a distribution list and you will be able to add users by going over here, clicking on the user, and then going over here to edit. You can add them here or remove them. As soon as they're added to the group, they'll have access to any of the templates that have been added uh, to that group. All right. Oh, and actually one other thing that I wanted to point out, as you create users, it's going to automatically uh, give them a license. That is something that you can adjust, but that is usually the default option, especially since most of the time it's admins adding these users. You can track your allocation right down here. So this is going to be uh, your allocation bar. It'll tell you how many licenses have been allocated based on how many are available to you. If you end up deleting a user, you get that license back to reallocate to a new user. Okay, now we are going to talk about uh, the power of smart fields. So this is going to be really helpful for you, especially if you um, want to create these templates that are going to be used by everyone and you don't want to have them put in their name every single time. If we, if you create a template with a smart field, it'll automatically populate their information. And I'm going to go over the difference between company smart fields and profile smart fields as well. So in order to try this, I recommend going back into your platform and you're going to create a document. In this case, I selected a business card. Now as a quick review, I went ahead and just put in the basic information here and I'll show you how to insert a smart field. So for the first name, I'm going to highlight it, right click and then go into smart fields. Now this is going to be where you'll see the profile versus team. Now to break down the difference, the profile is going to populate the information for the person logged in that's seeing this document. So for example, when I put in profile and then first name, it'll show my first name. When you convert this into a template and then share it out with your users, when they open up this document for themselves, it's going to populate with their first name, not yours. So this is really helpful for business cards, for flyers, um, directories, anything that you can think of. Uh, so that way they don't have to edit it a ton. It's populating for them. Now, if I go down to website, I'm going to turn that into a smart field as well. Now with the team, that's going to be set by you. Um, underneath your admin settings, there's going to be some smart fields that you can create. This is going to be for really important information that if it changes, it really needs to be populated across the board. 
this is going to be the difference between the copy and pasting. So for example, I have a website, but you can even do it for legal disclosures because in all uh, reality, if the legal disclosure changes, you really want to make sure that it's going to be changed across all of your documents. That is not something that you want to uh, leave up to chance and you really don't want to have to hunt down every single document with a legal disclosure. So it's really up to you how you decide to use it. Uh, so again, the team is going to be for everybody on the platform. So that can be your website, your address, a legal disclosure, or anything you see fit. Use your creativity to decide what that means for your team. The profile is going to populate the information of the person uh, logged in and viewing it. Now, at this point, I really want to uh, share the success story that Brie has brought up to me. I think it's really fantastic. So I am actually going to uh, share my video. So once it's turned on, perfect. All right, so Brie shared this success story with me about uh, one of her customers. His name is Sean. He is in the real estate, and actually I will stop sharing real quick. Okay, perfect, now you can see me. <laughs> so Sean is in the real estate industry, but this is really applicable to any industry that you're in because I know that we have a lot of people from different verticals. So take what you will from this and apply it to your specific use case. So. Sean is a master educator. He really knows how to teach people and he understands that when you're teaching your end users or your team, it is really important that you show them uh, the end result because people just don't get excited over abstract concepts. You need to show them right off the bat what they can create. So he created this portfolio that he shares with everybody that is a new hire in his company. So I'm just going to show you a couple examples of what's included. So he gives every new hire this portfolio that's chock full of fantastic collateral, whether it's um, information on a specific property where they can open up. There's a, tons of, a ton of great pictures in here. And then he shows them all of this great collateral and tells them, you can create this. We've already gone in and created all these templates. All you have to do is create a copy and then input uh, the pictures. And as far as the uh, realtor's information goes, that's all populated for them. So they just have to put in the property information. And so I just thought that this is a really fantastic way to approach it. Really make sure that they can see from the start what they can create. So again, this is just for real estate, but you can really take these concepts and apply it to where you're at as well. You can create it if you're in the higher education sector too, um, or even just general business. Just show them all the great things that they can create through LucidPress and how easy it is for them. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my video and reshare my screen here. Okay, now, at this point, we are actually finishing up our webinar. Um, Brie, if you uh, picked up on any questions, definitely let me know and we can go ahead and answer that. Okay, perfect. So, um, Brie has been doing a great job with answering any questions in the chat. And if you guys have any questions about this at all um, after the webinar, feel free to shoot us an email and we can answer your questions uh, specifically for your use case, which is always uh, individual. So thank you guys so much for your time. And we wanted to extend this offer to you. If you get up to a 90% or more allocation of your licenses, we're going to send you an invitation to an invitation only webinar where we're going to go into um, even deeper subjects that are going to help you a ton with truly mastering the LucidPress platform. And so we're going to uh, select some different subjects and really do a deep dive into them. And of course, you'll get the recording with that as well. So once you guys hit the 90% allocation, 
uh, let us know and we would be happy to send that uh, invitation over to you guys. So thank you so much for your time. We'll talk to you soon.